Are you excited to go to the dentist? <laughs> yeah. We'll see how long that lasts, right? My daughter's almost three, and this is her first dentist appointment. Poor cake could completely melt down. What do you think about that, Ray Ray? Are you gonna melt down on camera? Yeah. Yep. Probably. I thought she was gonna melt down. I thought she was going to lose her mind. I thought she was gonna cry hysterically, and it was just gonna be a total mess. And it kind of was, but not in the way that I was expecting. My kid was fine. She was well behaved, she was happy, she was attentive. But as I was watching her bravery, and she was just sitting there and she's so calm, the waterworks started flowing. I get emotional because she's just. She's just getting so big. I struggle so much with parenting. And it's just like, when I look at her, being brave in the chair just makes me think I'm. Do you think that I'm actually doing okay? How do you feel? I'm doing okay because she's doing okay. It's one of those things where I don't know if I could take all the credit, but I feel like I'm doing something to raise a child who is able to be calm and show her sense of resilience. That, you know what, daddy's not here to hold my hand. I'm in this strange dentist chair, don't know what's happening, and I'm gonna be brave because I always teach her like it's okay. I will always be there for you, even if I'm not physically there. I will always be there. Even when I'm not there, I'll be there. Bias is creepy. Bias is sneaky. You don't realize it's in there until a moment like that. I have two daughters. My 11-year-old, Callie, is kind of like me. Callie, what do people say when they find out that you have white parents? Sometimes they're like, oh, you don't look like you that. I'm like, oh, I'm a talk to you. I'm in seventh grade. I look at Callie and I see an innocent little 11-year-old girl. I usually just think about Netflix and shoes and school, of course. that there's the possibility that you might be treated differently by some people from your sister just based on the fact that you're black and Sydney's white. When you have to say something like that to your kid, it's really sad. It just felt like we were bursting her bubble. But nothing like that's ever happened to you, right? No. I just saw a white woman sitting at a bus stop. 20, 30 feet away was a black guy walking down the street. And for some reason, I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna watch just to make sure that she's okay. I looked at this guy differently based solely on the fact that he was black. I was really disappointed in myself. It's something we need to talk about. This post is embarrassing. This post is saying something that doesn't put me in a very good light. But I thought it was important. If I want people to talk, well, I have to put myself out there first. Ashton Kutcher retweeted that. You can't change anything until you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I have this bias, so what am I gonna do about it now? I'm gonna do something a little bit different based on everything that happened last week. We all come at things, it's just so important to have these discussions. We do, we need to, we need to have real discussions. We all have biases. I sure learned that I have them and I'm trying to make sure that that never happens again. Let's go. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Come here. Mm -hmm. Cousin, get moving. Go, 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 you're late. I think when it comes to doing her hair, uh, that's still a very small percentage of raising a daughter. You know, it's probably less than 1%. You know, everything about it is trying to build up her confidence, trying to teach her how a man should be in her life. It's just about being involved, and this is just another way to get involved. Creating the class itself, I found that it'd be a great opportunity for the girls to get together, the dads to get together, more of like a hangout, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, we're gonna go over some braids, yeah. right? And some buns and some basic hair stuff. When they hear like single dad, 
raising a daughter, starting this class to help out other dads, they're like, oh my goodness, like, why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing something to better our world? I do this so that her world is a better place. What I'm seeing in the big picture is I'm seeing a lot of dads gain confidence. You know, I say, do your daughter's hair and watch, watch how she'll light up when she's in class and she's talking to friends about, you know, her dad being involved. I said, just watch how it affects her, her confidence. And, and that'll in turn affect you. So in the class, you know, I do see a lot of dads, they come in and fumble and they need to know that it's not about the quality of the braid or the, the quality of the bun. It's really about spending time with your girl, you know? You braided before? No. Doing her hair, the best part about it is the phone's away, the, the technology's away, it's just me and her, and you really get to connect with your child. If they're not raised right, if they're not raised, if they're not heard, if they're not built up the way they should be, they'll ultimately suffer because of it. You know, a, a dad to play tea party, or a dad to, to play dress up, I mean, it's uncommon. But it shouldn't be, you know, we need to have fun and be creative and not worry about what the world thinks about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Same. We have a class now in uh, Texas, Pennsylvania, Kansas, and then Indiana. Raising a kid is so complex. Doing hair is, is simple, you know, but if it gives the opportunity for a parent to bond with their kid, we've got to take it, you know? Any opportunity. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's pretty cool. Me first, you first. You. Okay. She's been painting my nails since she was two. I get interesting questions about the nails. I've had people ask, like, are you in a rock band? <laughs> and when I walk around with them, I look at my nails that she's painted, I think about her, and that's really nice. So it's like a way of taking her around with me. Oh, um, well, that's got sparkles in it. When little kids ask me questions, especially the boys, they ask, you're wearing nail polish. I'm like, yeah. And they, let, they say, that's for girls. And I'm like, no, it's not. Why? Like, I'm not a girl. I'm wearing it. What's the answer? What do you tell them? There's no boy color or girl color. That's right. I'm not the painter all your toes. So usually when people say, your nails are painted, I'm like, yeah, so are my toes, or isn't it a great color? When I'm out with friends, I think definitely a lot of um, the men, I've gotten looks and you can tell that they're trying to figure out like what my deal is. Really for me, it's not about sexuality. It has nothing to do with that. Nails are not about gender either, it's just about colors and being comfortable doing it. You know, as a single dad, raising a really strong, confident woman is super important for me. Um, and making sure she's got great role models, but also being a great role model is a primary goal, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I'll start. What did you think? What did you think? What did you think? What did you think? What did you think when I told you I was gay? Well, you were kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think anything because I knew it, and I just needed you to tell me it. I felt relieved. I wasn't like dumbfounded, shocked, and surprised. Right. <laughs> Did you have any fears after I told you I was gay? Yes. <laughs> well, not fears of, of you, just fears for you, about people accepting you outside of your house. I, I think society has progressed an awful lot, but naturally I had fears for you for being a victim of discrimination. Were you scared to tell me you were gay? I was petrified. I had known I was gonna be in the city for two nights, and I had plans if you guys didn't want me to stay in the house with you anymore. <laughs> I can't believe you felt that way. When did you first know I was gay, if ever? Remember my favorite Power Ranger was the pink one. When did you first know I was gay? When you were like four years old with a, with a sheet wrapped around you singing Ella Fitzgerald, I mean. There was times in life that I thought you were, especially when you would walk around the house singing show tunes. <laughs> <'Cause> my... <laughs> I had conversations with people who were involved in the gay and bisexual community um, really early on when you were little. What? <laughs> and, and at that moment I said to myself, oh shit, he's gay. <laughs> and said, oh, you know what? That kid's gay? That kid's gay. Wow. Was I one of the first or the last people you told, and why? I guess you were kind of both, because I kind of came out all at once. <laughs> if you could set me up with one celebrity, who would it be and why? Whoa. <laughs> what about, like, Brad Pitt from Thelma and Louise? Oh, I don't, I don't like Brad Pitt. 
That's why I'm gay yeah. and you're not. Uh, <laughs> you are such a unique, great guy. You're, you are gonna find the right person for yourself when you're not looking. And I don't give a shit about whether it's a celebrity or whether it's a, you know, some guy who uh, you know, sweeps the streets. So I, I really can't find a good answer to that question. Do you have any advice out there for dads who think their son might be gay? Yes. Open up, ask them, talk to them, be honest, and let them know that you support them and love them no matter who they are. It's, it has nothing to do with them being gay. They pay attention to your kids. You, know, you want the best for your child. You want to encourage them to be who they are. So if that's who they are, that's who they are. I mean, it's kind of simple. Oh, happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. Happy Father's Day, oh, Dad! Thank Yay. you! Thank you! Happy Father's Day, Dad! <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> what did you get me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very good. <laughs>